This is the future Elon Musk warned us about. 14 years ago, this monkey started by operating the robotic arm with her thoughts. Today, this monkey runs Tesla. Oh, I know where things are going. First, they begin with monkeys, then implants for disabled people, and then they send those disabled people to war. In the world we're talking about, there are surrogates, robots that fully imitate a person that coexists with humans in a community and serves their needs. Why leave your house for a five minute walk to the local Pizza Hut if you can make your surrogate do it? Sold. A few years past, and surrogates are used by 98% of the world's population. Crime rates drop to record lows. Because what do you need crime for when everyone's sitting at their homes and making surrogates do all the monkey business? But of course, there are protesters against using robots. Americans can't live without protesting against something. The minority against robots establishes reservations, free of any surrogates, led by a hippie named The Prophet. In the present day, we see some kid driving in the backseat of a classy car, talking with his dad. We see a motorcycle rolling out and chasing the limo. The teen is some rich kid who is expecting expected to visit the opera, but instead decided to visit a local nightclub for some cheap pleasures. Relatable. The teen hangs out for a bit and then takes a woman outside. Then suddenly, a motorcyclist comes and eliminates them both. Later, Agent Tom and Agent Peters come to the crime scene. Both women and the rich kid were surrogates, and their memory cards were fried up. The operator of the rich kid is unknown, but the woman's surrogate was operated on by a dude named Cameron McAllister. Alrighty then. Agents pay a visit to Cam, the operator. Cam is found dead in his operating booth. Tom gets home where we meet his operator. The diehard dude himself. Man, it would be so hard laying down in an operating booth 24-7 without even moving. What am I talking about? We all live like this now. Tom visits his son's room, which seems quite empty. Then he meets his wife's surrogate and suggests they should have a vacation in Hawaii. His wife doesn't understand why they should go as humans. The freaking metaverse is everywhere nowadays. Meanwhile, the FBI discovers the body of the rich kid's operator. Turns out, whatever killed his surrogate killed the operator too. This has never happened before. FBI boss Stones demands total media blackout. Don't tell Kanye West. Agent Tom uses paint 3D magnifier and discovers two surrogates were killed by a weapon. Duh. Nice job, agent. The office gets a call and we find out that the rich kid is Jared Cantor, the son of Lionel Cantor, the inventor of surrogates. That's a little saucy. We also learn that Lionel was the head of the huge corporation VSI that invented surrogates but was fired seven years ago after a conflict with other partners. After, he was humiliatingly thrown from his own company. Cantor went on a total lockdown in his mansion. Detectives visit Cantor himself, his surrogate who appears just like his own son, Jared. Cantor tells a heartbreaking story about how he never knew his own son and his wife kept him away from the father. Relatable. I never knew my son either. Either. Never had one though. Tom shares that he also lost his son to open up to Cantor a bit during the dialogue. Then Cantor realizes that whoever killed his son must have been hunting Cantor himself, and Lionel blames himself for losing his child. Now the investigation gang visits VSI headquarters, which appears to be an amalgam of Apple and Microsoft. He sold his company out to suck your money. VSI chiefs don't even want to hear that someone can blow an operator's head through a surrogate. Of course, they are scared to accept the bankrupting truth. Without getting any answers, Tom goes to the engineering floor. They meet Dr. Stein who helpfully gets agents through the engineering process. Apparently, some of the soldier surrogates were brought back defective without any scratch and a missing optics and identity chip, just like Jared and his one night stand. Agents visit army boys and the general, but the latter says no weapon can eliminate both the surrogate and its operator. If it existed, he would have known about it. All the weapons came from the army initially. Back at the office, Agent Peters finds Miles Strickland, a motorcyclist suspect. He was busted for some criminal activity before but was released. Anyways, Miles was found by the CCTV office. Tom runs to catch Miles while Peters is left alone with the that's literally me guy, CCTV admin. While they're enjoying the small talk, the camera detects an assault and battery. Admin finds the surrogates and disconnects them from a distance. Nice tech you got there, cops. Is that legal to disconnect operators from their surrogates? Who cares when Big Brother's the one who writes the rules? Meanwhile, Tom chases Miles on a helicopter. The latter heads right into human reservation. Cops have no jurisdiction there, so Tom must be careful. Yeah, whatever. Like we haven't seen the FBI breaking their own rules twice in this movie already. Miles gets caught but grabs his stashed weapon and destroys all the surrogates. Then he shoots at Tom, but our boy gets the helmet off before getting his brains boiled. Miles gets in the reservation and after a moment, Tom returns to his surrogate while his birdie gets down. Ouch, reminds me of that tragedy. Rip in peace, Kobe. Tom is lucky enough to lose his hand, so he grabs a gun and continues pursuing Miles, but they're on reservation territory now. So the redneck anti vat I mean anti-surrogates, chase Tom too. Finally, Tom catches Miles and takes his weapon, but he gets shot by angry Karen. Tom, the human, is pretty fried up and calls for help from Maggie, but she's probably doing some saucy surrogate stuff. Meanwhile at the office, Peter gets scolded for her partner's behavior and dismissed for the day. Finally, Maggie is home to find her husband lying on the floor, almost deadly dead, and calls an ambulance. Meanwhile, 
Well, Miles gets a visit from the Prophet himself. The Prophet asks who gave Miles the weapon. Miles doesn't know. Tom is at the hospital with his hot surrogate wife. I wonder if she's like a human down there. I mean, at the bottom of her heart. We learn that dreads from the human reservation considered the helicopter crash an act of violence and declared a revolution. Oopsie. Boss visits Tom and says he's suspended and won't get a new surrogate for some time. Bummer. Guess you'll have to pick up Pizza Hut on your own. Too bad your son is dead. He could have done it too. Tom leaves the hospital and meets Peters, who sees him in the flesh for the first time. They take a walk outside and Tom is anxious. He can't even remember the last time he was out in his human body. Oh god, so relatable. They visit a local shop of cheap surrogates, but they're all too saucy for Tom. It's not what he needs, so he goes out all alone with his bones. If he can do it, then maybe I can touch grass too. Tom goes to the human reservation and finds his surrogate crucified. Those human lunatics. There's a rally where the prophet announces the death of Miles. Hmm, super sussy. Tom goes through the reservation and sees humans enjoying their authentic lives and kind of likes it too. Maybe he should join. Tom wants to talk with the prophet, but the latter got dedicated security agents who beat the crap out of Tom just for him to enjoy how real pain really feels. Thanks guys, I appreciate your effort. Tom asks about the weapon and prophet promises to return it to the FBI if he finds it. Imagine if the real FBI knew that some group of hippies had a mass destruction weapon. The place would have been shredded to tatters in half an hour. Tom gets thrown away from the reservation while the prophet visits his stash and peeks at the weapon. Tom gets picked up by Dr. Cantor who uses his son's child surrogate. We learn that Tom lost his child in a car accident. Tom also says that the man who killed Cantor's son is dead due to death. Killed by the dreads, or the lunatics, or the hippies, or the rednecks. It's the same thing here. But we understand they couldn't build a weapon like this. So the question of who killed young Cantor is still open. Meanwhile at home, Maggie enjoys a party with surrogate friends. And they're doing some weird robot things with some kind of electric stimulator. She thought you were still in the hospital, bro. Does it sound like a good reason to have a party without you? Not for Tom, who beats the crap out of one surrogate. But it's only a robot. So everyone laughs at Tom's pathetic physical violence attempts. Maggie tries to talk with Tom, but he wants his wife back. Not that circuit that is not even so enjoyable down at the bottom of her heart. Tom hits his office to search for some info about VSI and weapons. At the same time, Peters gets visited by some sneaky Ken-looking surrogate who kills her human body and gets access to her surrogate. Tom takes another shot to learn something about the weapon from the general. This time, the guy is much more talkative. He says the weapon is called Overload Device. Creative. It gives a software virus to the CPU and can kill all the surrogates at once, but they didn't know it could kill operators, meaning humans. And what's even better, the weapon is made by VSI itself. Tom breaks the news that the weapon is at the hands of the rednecks, so General gets pretty nervous and rolls out of the building. Meanwhile, the prophet gives the weapons to his apostles and orders them to deliver it to Peters, who at the same time searches for some papers on VSI in her department. Boss catches her. Whatever. If she's on a 9 to 5 job, she has to do something during long lunch breaks. Tom visits his wife at her job and tries to talk with her about their tragedy, but it doesn't really work that well. Thanks to surrogates, she can just turn herself off. Pretty cool. Cool. Girls can do this instead of pretending they have a headache now. Army boys roll into the reservation to show who's Uncle Sam here. Hippies try to fight back, but what are the odds here? The prophet gets shot too. And dies. Or did he? Turns out, the prophet was a surrogate all along. And who operated him? Dr. Cantor. Later, Peters handles Tom's file on Miles. It turns out Miles was working for the FBI all the time. This means that their boss hired Miles to kill Cantor. Tom goes to his boss and confronts him. Before realizing anything, the boss gets stabbed in the back of his head. Classic Assassin's Creed moment. Tom takes his memory chip, enters the boss's PC, downloads some files, and flees the party with Peters. In the car, Tom goes through the hacked files and finds codes for the overload device. Thanks for helping, Tom. Now get stabbed in the back. Peters calls the police to snitch on Tom, then makes it look like a car accident. Not so fast, Peters. Tom chases her with his car, trying to cause a casualty. Classic action scene that ate all the budget of the movie begins. A minute passes by and the budget is gone. So Tom kisses the shop with his car and hides underneath it so the cops don't fight him. Then he flees the scene, stealing some someone's car. Tom calls the admin so he can disconnect Peters, but she's one step ahead. Tom calls his wife, but she ignores him. Typical. Meanwhile, Peters calls out for her boss. Actually, it's Dr. Cantor operating Peters. The doctor blames Stone for working with VSI and killing his son. Stone approaches Peters, and she shoots him with the weapon, killing both the surrogate and the operator. Tom gets to Dr. Cantor's mansion, killing some of his servant surrogates. At that moment, Cantor tries to hack something and probably destroy all the surrogates with his weapon. Tom finds Cantor in the flesh, who tells him about his plan to heal humanity from the surrogate's addiction. I invented it, and I'll stop it by killing millions. Now that's what I call humanism. The virus is uploaded to the main server, and nothing can stop it now. So Cantor self-deletes. 
At first, this guy only slightly reminded me of a painter turned dictator, but now it's undeniable. Tom connects to Peters and together with the admin, tries to stop the virus from clapping everyone. They stop it at the last second. Now it's time to stop the machine from turning off all the surrogates. Tom takes a second thought and prefers not to do it. Peter's surrogate gets clapped and all the surrogates around the world get turned off. Like Thanos, Tom walks around admiring the results of his work. Clapped surrogates lying on the streets. Humans leave their houses, enjoying fresh air and sunlight for the first time in ages. Tom gets back home and knocks out the door in his wife's room. She's not there, but someone ate lots of her pills. Tom finds her in their son's room. At least she's alive. They hug each other. We learn from the news that the whole world turned off the surrogate system. Will it ever come back? Will Meta escape bankruptcy? We'll just have to find out. Moral of the story? Elon Musk and Mark Zuckerberg.